Okay, so today's build didn't quite go to plan. Originally, I was supposed to use this ETA2824 clone movement. But just as I turned on the camera to start recording, I figured out that the movement was no good and that the keyless works is most likely faulty. So we're going to be using an NH35 movement for this build just because it's what I had in stock. So we'll save the ETA2824 for another time. So let's get this dial ready to fit on this NH35 movement. And to do that, we're gonna need to cut off a couple of dial feet on the back of this dial so we can fit this dial to the movement. Now, when we're doing this, we need to keep in mind that we're using a case with the crown at 3.8 o'clock. So just line the dial up with the movement to work out which feet you need to cut off. Now, once I snap my dial feet off, I'm always left with these little stubs on the back of the dial. So just be sure to sand these flat before continuing. Now I use a small cordless Dremel to do this, but if you don't have one of those, a file works just perfectly. And once you've sanded the back of the dial nice and flat, be sure to give it a really good clean because you don't want any of those metal filings dropping down into the movement. An air blower and a small bit of rotico is all you need. So now that we've cut off the dial feet that we don't need, we can pair this dial to the movement. Now there are two small holes on the outer grey ring on the movement that accept the dial feet. And what I found on this dial is that the dial feet just do not line up with those holes in the movement. Now the dial is advertised as an NH35 dial, so I'm not sure what is going on. But the spacing of the dial feet on the back of the dial just does not match the dial feet spacing on the movement. As you can see here, I'm just spreading the dial feet apart, trying to fit it to the movement. Now there's two options in this case, either give up or we can improvise, cut the dial feet off the back of the dial and use double sided tape to stick the dial to the movement. So obviously we're going for option two. So now our dial is fully prepped, we can grab our double sided tape and get ready to stick this dial to the movement. So I like to use 3M double sided tape, which is the same tape that I also use to stick down bezel inserts. So it is tried and tested and I know that it will hold the dial down for many years to come. But you can also buy a product called Dial Dots, which is a product made specifically for this job, but it's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to use three small pieces of tape evenly spread around the movement to hold this dial down. And like I mentioned earlier, the case we're using has the crown at 3.8 o'clock, which is very important to keep in mind at this stage. So to line the dial up in the correct position, I'm using the dummy crown stem as a guide and a reference point to make sure that this dial is lined up correctly once it's fitted into the case. And once we fit this into the case, the dial will be held firmly in between the case and the movement, so we shouldn't have to worry about any movement once it's fitted. Another thing to note is that I left the date wheel complication on this movement. Now leaving that date wheel on isn't going to have any functional effect on the watch, but realistically I should have removed the date wheel or used an NH38 movement. But now that we've got the dial fitted, we can go ahead and start setting our hands. Now our first hand obviously is going to be our hour hand. Now in this case I did set the movement to 12am because the date wheel is still there. And to do that, I just rotated the movement over in the time setting position until the date wheel clicked. Then I can go ahead and set the hands at 12 o'clock. And in between setting each hand, I like to rotate the movement over two times just to make sure that the hands operate properly and clear anything on the dial. But in this case, we've got a dial with printed indices, so no clearance issues to worry about. 
Another great use for the Rotico is using it to clean your hands. It's great for removing any smudges or any marks on your dial or handset. I also use it to hold the hands while I'm setting them, as it removes the potential for leaving any marks or scratches. And lastly, we've got our second hand. Now a lot of people consider this the hardest hand to press on, as it is the smallest. But with a lot of practice and some good lighting, it does get a lot easier. Having the movement at eye level also makes a world of difference. And this is ideally how you want your handset to look when everything is fitted. Each hand should be nice and level and have a good amount of clearance between each hand. Now setting the hands is probably the hardest part of building your own watch, so don't get discouraged if it takes a little bit longer than what you were expecting. Sorry for the quick interruption, but I just wanted to say, if you're enjoying this video so far, you might be interested in checking out my Patreon account, which is linked in the description below. Now over there, I offer one-on-one -on -one customized support for all your watch modding needs. I even share all of my supplies to help you kickstart your watch modding journey. Now I also do a monthly watch giveaway which you can enter for as little as five Australian dollars. Now if that sounds like something you're interested in and you want to help support the channel, check out my Patreon which is linked in the description below. Now back to the video. So now we can get ready to fit this movement into the case. Now to do that we need to remove this dummy crown stem. So there's a small lever that pops out when the crown is pushed in. To remove the dummy crown stem, all you need to do is push that lever down while pulling the crown out. Once we've got the crown stem removed, we can start to prepare our case to accept the movement. So let's grab our case and remove the case back and case back gasket. Now we can start cleaning this crystal to get it spotless. Now to do this, I like to use my lens pen and air blower. The lens pen is great as it doesn't leave any smudges or any lint behind, unlike some microfiber cloths that I've used in the past. Now it's important that you take your time during this step and make sure that that crystal is spotless. Ideally, once we pair the movement with the case, we don't want to be taking the movement back out. And once you're satisfied that you've got that crystal perfectly clean, we can go ahead and pair the movement with the case. Once that movement is seated in the case, we can flip it over and make sure it's lined up by lining the crown stem hole in the movement with the crown stem tube in the case. And I just use my small screwdriver on the plastic ring of the movement just to fine tune the rotational position of the movement. And once it's lined up, we can flip it over and make sure that we've stuck our dial down in the right position. And it looks like we have absolutely nailed the dial position. So now we can go ahead, remove the crown and start the process of cutting down our crown stem. Now this step can also be quite nerve wracking if you're new to this process, so I always recommend carrying a few spare crown stems just in case you do cut it too short. And in saying that, I'll have all the parts and tools that I've used in this video linked in the description below. I also file down the end of the crown stem after I've cut it just to remove any sharp edges or burrs. This way I remove the risk of damaging the threads inside the crown. Now if you don't have a Dremel, a small file would be perfect. Now those of you who have watched my videos in the past would know that I just cut the crown stem by eye, but this isn't a method that I would recommend if you're just starting out. Ideally you'd use a set of vernier calipers to measure the crown stem and cut accordingly. And you can see here that that crown stem is still a few millimetres too long as it won't screw down all the way into the case. So now it's time to pull that crown stem back out, cut another few millimetres off it and retry it. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I've cut the crown stem down to the right length, so I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite on these threads before screwing the crown on. This will just save me a little bit of time not having to pull that crown back out if I have now the length. And 
and always remember to wipe off any excess Loctite before test fitting the crown into the movement. Now we can fit this crown stem into the movement for what is hopefully the final time. And I think I've nailed the length this time. The crown screws down all the way flush into the case and there's a nice bit of spring in the crown when it's in the time setting position. So now let's grab our case back gasket and get it lubricated in some silicon grease. This just helps act as a moisture barrier and helps to prevent any water from entering the case. That gasket should sit nicely in a groove in the case. If there isn't a groove in the case you're using, the case back gasket will most likely be fitted to the case back itself. And it's not a bad idea to give the case back a quick clean out just to make sure that there's no debris that could fall into the movement when the case back is fitted. Once you've run the case back in all the way by hand, then it's time to grab your case back tool and lock it down for good. And with that, our watch head assembly is complete. Now I'm really happy with how this watch is coming along so far. I think it's a great looking tactical style field watch and I love that titanium case. But now it's on to the final step, which is fitting our canvas watch strap. Now these straps have a quick release fitting, which makes fitting them a breeze. Each strap can be fitted in just a couple of seconds, making it super easy to change the straps and transform the look of your watch within seconds. So I have bought a few different colors that I can play around with if I get bored of this one. But now let's flip this watch over, run some V-roll and see how it looks.